What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video here today. I'm excited to bring you all this new video talking about some big time news we got this past week about college football and the ACC. So let's jump right into it. And in my last video I made on the channel, I broke down NC State's football record and what I, I went through their schedule, their previous schedule now. And I, I went over it and I made my predictions to what I thought their record would be. And as we know now with the news that we just come out, schedule has changed and, and the ACC has gone to a conference only schedule with one non-conference game that's going to be played for each team. As you've seen in that tweet with this new format, all ACC schools will play 10 games and including Notre Dame, they will have a 10 game ACC, ACC schedule and they will also play in a non-conference team that is to be determined. And here in this graphic is just breaking down each team and who they play at home in a way the times and the dates for each game have not been set yet so the, the official schedule has not came out but we do have who we do know who's going to play who games can start as early as september 2nd so that means that scheduled wednesday game against louisville to start the season will not happen and as a matter of fact louisville is not on our schedule at all anymore this year the acc will not be split up in divisions there will be no atlantic or no there will be no coastal division it'll be just one conference and the two teams with the best records will play in the acc championship game in charlotte and it could be two teams that were formerly from the the Atlantic, like a Clemson against Boston College or Clemson against State, or we could see uh, two coastal teams like a Pitt and a Virginia Tech play in the ACC championship game, as well as another team. So this year is going to be very, very different. And speaking of things being very, very different this year, you look at the schedule for State and you see missing, you see it's missing one important opponent, and that's Clemson, a team that we usually play. We played them, I believe, every year since 1970. So it's going to be different not playing Clemson. It may be a good thing for State. We know how things go against Clemson and how good they are, so it's nice to get a break from them this year. And who knows, it's 2020, anything can happen at this point. I mean, we may see them in the championship game. All right, all right, I won't get too ahead of myself. But looking at the NC State schedule, or opponents list, I should say, looking at our opponents, it's good to have Clemson and Louisville off the schedule. But we do have some tough teams going on the road to Virginia. Virginia Tech would not be easy, as well as going up to Pitt. And having to play Miami in, at home, that's going to be pretty tough. And as well as Florida State, who was previously on our other schedule as well, there's going to be some tough home games. But I'd, I'd much rather be playing a team like Pitt on the road rather than playing Clemson and Death Valley. So I'll take it. And another team we avoided was Notre Dame. And a lot of people have been very, very upset, and they've been very outspoken about Notre Dame joining the ACC. I just, I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. I mean, let them play, you know, see what happens. I want to see them in a conference for once, and it would be hilarious. I know they would, the haters would hate it to see Notre Dame win the ACC. I hope they don't, you know, obviously I hope State wins it, but it would be, it would be very, very funny to see Notre Dame win the ACC and then go back to independent again. It would, Notre Dame fans would let everybody have it then. It won't be easy at all for Notre Dame. They'll play Clemson at least once on their way to a potential ACC title. They'll play them, I believe, at Notre Dame, and then they'll have to go on the road for a couple of tough games. They go to North Carolina, so they're going to be tested in the ACC. So it'll be interesting to see how they do in a conference. And I'm looking forward to seeing it, but I think it would just be hilarious if they win the ACC and shut up all the haters about them not being in the conference. But we'll see. And I don't think they're going to win the ACC. I don't think they'll even make the championship game, in my opinion. State will have to find a non-conference opponent to fill out their 11-game schedule. And we know it won't be from Mississippi State, who is in the SEC, and they have decided to go to a conference-only schedule. We also know it won't be from Delaware, who was previously on the schedule. They have canceled all of their fall sports. So that leaves the possibility of playing either Liberty or Troy as that non-conference game, or it could be a, a whole other team that wasn't on our previous schedule. We have to wait and see about that one. And once that game comes out, I believe I will make another video break down state schedule and give my thoughts and predictions, just like I did on the previous video. So make sure to be on the lookout for that video. I want to talk about some recruiting, but before we get into all that, we have to give some respect to TJ Warren. Mr. Tony Buckets himself. And if you didn't know, the NBA did start back this past week where they had 22 teams still competing and fighting for the playoff spots, and that's where they'll play the remainder of the season at. And T.J. Warren, former NC State star and ACC Player of the Year for the Pacers, has went. he went off in his first game, 53 points, 20 to 29 from the field, nine threes, just absolutely dominated. And then, again, in his last game against the Wizards, he dropped 34 points, had 11 rebounds, four blocks, three steals, absolutely doing it all, dominating. 
And, I mean, this really comes as no surprise for State fans. We know TJ is dominant. He's a great scorer. If you remember his sophomore season, I believe he averaged 24 and carried a really mediocre state team to the NCAA tournament. So we know what he's all about. And it's funny seeing all these guys in the NBA, NBA fans, just kind of casual fans who don't really realize how good TJ is. They don't realize he's a guy who's averaged 19 over the past three years for the, for the Suns and the Pacers. And this is a guy who was traded for cash considerations. And the Suns gave a pick up just to get rid of him. And now he's putting up 50 points and dominating down the stretch of the NBA season. So it's just great to see TJ doing his thing. I'm glad to see him getting that respect he deserves, and hopefully he's found a home on a really good Pacers team and can help him have a deep playoff run. And continuing with good basketball news, we did get the official word from DJ Funderburk. He will be back for his senior season for the Wolfpack, and this is something you got to celebrate. We don't get we don't get to see these things happen very often. This usually ends bad for State, but we do get DJ back. A huge pickup to have him and also have Devin Daniels coming back, and NC State is ready to go, and they have their full roster set to go for next season, so glad DJ's back. Now I want to move over to recruiting. I want to talk about basketball as well as football. But first I'll start with our, our only commitment in football since my last video, and that is from three-star offensive lineman out of the state of Georgia, Lyndon Cooper. He's a big guy, a very physical offensive lineman. He committed to NC State over Syracuse. His recruitment kind of took off over the past couple months. He got that offer from State, and then he got the offer from Syracuse and ECU, I believe. So he's definitely kind of a, a late bloomer, but he's very, very talented, and he's going to be a big-time pickup for NC State. So it's nice to have him on board and joining the pack. And sticking with offensive linemen recruits, you can see the staff has put a priority on big-time linemen. State did make the top seven for four-star offensive tackle Yusuf Mugerbill out of Murphy, North Carolina. He's another one of those guys whose recruitment has been under the radar for the most part. He's been real quiet about it. But State's in a great spot. He has brothers that go to NC State. He's took multiple visits to State over the past couple of years. So I feel State's in a great position. I also think Florida will be a tough competitor in this race. He seems very interested in Florida as well. So I'd say State and Florida are at the top. And whenever you're in a recruiting battle with an SEC school like Florida, you're gonna to have to be a, you're gonna to have to make the recruit a priority and a main target. And I believe State's doing that with Mugerville. So we'll see what happens. I won't make any predictions or any assumptions on his recruitment. And I believe he may end up waiting till the end of his senior season if he has one for football to make a decision. So we'll just have to wait and see what he does. State also made a top list this time, a top five list for three-star in-state DN Zion Reeves. Literally a huge target at six foot seven. He's a DN with great hands and great speed, really, at six foot seven to rest the edge, get after quarterbacks. He's been a priority for NC State as well. He's recently picked up a crystal ball to the Wolfpack. So I like where State's chances are. He goes to the same high school as NC State commit, wide receiver commit Michael Crowell. So I believe Crowell's probably talking to him about the Wolfpack. And hopefully we can get his commitment sometime soon. And talking about potential commitments coming soon, a huge commitment that could be coming could be from four-star in-state linebacker Jordan Poole. I've been following his recruitment a lot on this channel, posting updates about him in recent videos. And he posted this on Twitter on Sunday saying a decision soon, so we could maybe see a decision sometime this week or so. Poole was ranked 63rd in the country according to 247. He's ranked 268th in the composite ranking, the fifth best player in the state of North Carolina, according to 247 Sports. So he was picked up a few crystal ball predictions over the past month or so from a couple NC State's insiders on 247 Sports. But this past week, he got one a very high confidence level from National Director of Recruiting, Steve Wilfong, who has a very high accuracy on his crystal ball predictions. So usually when he makes a prediction, people listen. Almost 99% accuracy on his picks for 2021. So that's a good sight to see if you're an NC State fan. And Jordan Poole will be a huge pickup for the Wolfpack. I want to hop over to basketball recruiting real quick, and I want to touch on a couple of NC State targets that the Pack did miss out on over the past couple of weeks. It's been a tough couple of weeks recruiting for NC State basketball-wise. First was Quincy Allen, the four-star small forward out of Washington, D.C. He committed to Colorado over NC State, Georgetown, and a couple of other schools. Kind of out of nowhere, just kind of a commitment that came up out of the blue, but he's committed to Colorado, so he missed out on him. And then next was the five-star shooting guard, Matthew Cleveland. I made a video talking about our chances with him, and it seemed like FSU was always a leader. A guy who's ranked top 15 nationally, according to 247, commits to Florida State in, 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 in conference school, which makes it a little bit tougher to swallow for NC State. You still have to give a lot of credit to Coach Keats and his staff, recruiting him as hard as they could. And with so much uncertainty about scholarship numbers due to the NCAA violations from Dennis Smith, will we have one taken away? I don't know. We'll have to see. But with so much uncertainty and with a roster that's pretty much full with already two commitments, you can see why maybe he 
looked elsewhere, but State still in, to, in the mix with a couple of big time targets. I believe if State does take another player for 2021, it will be four star center Roosevelt Wheeler out of Virginia, a guy who has visited NC State and Coach Keats has made a top priority. And having a big time big man like him ranked nearly in the top 40 in the country, according to rivals, would be a big time commitment if we can get it. And the State's in a great position for him. And we'll have to see what happens. I don't think his recruitment will end anytime soon. He'll probably let it play out for the next six months or so. VCU has been pushing heavily for him, an in-state target. Kansas offered recently, as well as LSU, and they've also been in contact. So we'll see what happens. If Coach Geeks can land him, that'll probably be the last piece for the 2021 class, and he can switch over his focus for 2022. So we'll see what happens, and I'll keep you guys updated on how his recruitment goes. I believe that's going to pretty much do it for the end of this video. I just want to give you guys an update on that new schedule format for this upcoming football season. So it looks like we're going to have football, thankfully. Anything that can get us football, I'm down for a new schedule. And once we get that new non-conference game, uh, released i will probably make that remake that video discussing our schedule and breaking it down and giving my predictions so be on the lookout for that i appreciate everybody for watching if you did enjoy hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and thank you for watching and as always go pack